Hi and welcome to my maths class. Today we're going to discuss equations of a circle where the center is not 0, 0. We're also going to do various questions that can be asked in this section. Now the standard equation for a circle where the center is not 0, 0 is x minus a all squared plus y minus b all squared is equal to r squared. Now your a and your b is the center. So a and b is the center of the circle. And then r squared, if you root it, will give us r, which is the radius. If I give you the following equation, and I tell you, open brackets, x minus 3 all squared plus y plus 2 all squared is equal to 49. Give me number 1, the center, and number 2, the radius. Now the center is linked to the brackets. But be careful. What you should notice is that the sign from the original has changed when we're talking of the center. So if I have minus 3, then it means that the center is 3. If I have plus 2, then it means that the center is minus 2. Now the reason for that is because the question, the original question, has a negative. And since the original question has a negative, negatives changes your signs. So if I have a positive 3, when I put it in, it becomes negative 3. If I have a negative 2, when I put it in the equation, it becomes positive 2. So the center is 3 and minus 2. So what we need to remember is be careful with the signs. Now, how do I get radius? I know that the formula says r squared is equal to 49. If I root both sides, I have r is equal to 7. Now look, I am not putting plus and minus 7. Whereas in previously when you were solving and you had squares, I would put plus and minus in the answer. But I am not putting plus and minus because r is always positive. R is radius which is a length which is always positive. The next thing we're going to do is they would give you an equation and they would tell you get the turning points and get the radius. If you look at this equation and you look at the previous equation can you see this is written quite simply it's already made into your brackets so it's easy to pull out the center and the radius but when it is given in this form you have to know how to do your turning points of a parabola. Now turning points was minus b over 2a. To calculate the center of the circle is to know your turning points or to know how to do derivative. Now turning points you would have done in your grade 11 parabola. Derivatives you would have done in your calculus. Now you don't have to do both methods. You can do either one of the methods. We're going to discuss each method separately. Now let's look at the question. When we start, depend, it doesn't matter which method you use. The first thing you do is you take your constant over. So we're going to have x squared minus 6x plus y squared plus 10y. It's going to equal to negative 1. Now we're going to work with our x squared minus 6x separately and we're going to work with our y squared plus 10y separately because those are our two separate centers. The one is representing the x the one is representing the y. Now how do we do turning points? Turning points is where you say x is equal to minus b over 2a. So we're going to have in this case x is equal to minus b over 2a. So we have minus minus 6 over 2 times 1 which gives me x is equal to 3. Then we have y. You're going to use the same formula, but we're now doing y. So again, we're using minus b over 2a. So it would be minus our b is 10 over 2a, which is 1. a is 1. So we have y is equal to minus 5. That would mean that our formula is x minus 3 all squared plus y minus minus 5 
all squared is equal to now this is where you have to be careful you got your constant on one side then we did the turning points or I'm going to show you a second method you did your derivative which means now you have calculated your centers we've moved our constant over then we've got our centers by either using the turning point method or derivative but what we need to notice is that in this where we've got x minus 3 all squared plus y plus 5 all squared now why is it plus 5 because our minus and minus gives us plus 5 then we have equal to negative 1 but now you have to add the extras what does that mean you see here we had added a minus 3 squared extra because if you were to get rid of this bracket knowing from your simplifying then this is going to be x squared minus 6x plus 9 so we've added an extra 9 so what we've added was a minus 3 squared extra same goes for here it should have been y squared plus 10y plus 25 so we've added a 5 squared extra now the extra that we are putting on this side we have to balance it by putting it on the right hand side so you must make sure that you add your extras you always remember that the extras are the squares of the last numbers what does this give us it gives us x minus 3 all squared plus y plus 5 all squared equals minus 3 squared be careful with your calculator is 9 plus 5 squared is 25 so we've got 25 plus 9 minus 1 giving us 33 now you can tell me what is the center you know the center comes from this part of the equation so we have it as 3 and minus 5 remembering the change of signs then we have r squared is equal to 33 so if I want r it will be the root of 33 in order to get the center and the radius you had to know how to do your turning points now let us do the same question but look at using the derivative method all right let's take the following equation so it's the same equation that we had worked with before again we are working with the x alone and we are working with the y alone remembering that we brought the constant over now when you do derivative from your calculus you know how to do derivative if we do derivative of x squared minus 6x we end up with 2x minus 6 equals to 0 if you solve you got 2x is equal to 6 x is equal to 3 if we're doing derivative of y squared plus 10y we're going to have 2y plus 10 is equal to 0 2y is equal to negative 10 y is equal to minus 5 now from your calculus you would know derivative is usually gradient when you make it equal to 0 we're referring to a turning point derivative is the gradient but as soon as we make it equal to 0 we are doing a turning point exactly in a graph a calculus graph derivative equal to 0 gives us a turning point derivative is gradient gradient equal to 0 is a turning point same way this is giving us the center so what do we have as the center look at your previous work we have the center is 3 and minus 5 and if we come here we have the center is 3 and minus 5 and if we were going to continue the equation how do we write it x minus 3 all squared plus y minus minus 5 all squared is equal to minus 1 but you're not completed you have to remember to add the extras so we're going to add to our equation the negative 3 squared and we're going to add the 5 squared remembering that that is what we had added extra to our equation giving us a final answer of x minus 3 all squared plus y plus 5 all squared is equal to 33 so the method after you've done the turning points or the derivative 
is exactly the same in both ways. You can't do one and not do the other. It's important that you remember to add the extras. That's a very common mistake. Pupils tend to forget to do this part very often. Right, let's continue. So the basic one is where they can give you the equation and you just need to get the information. The second one is where they will give you an equation and you have to get the turning points. Let's do the next one. Now, when you are given the center and another point, then the main aim is to get R, which is exactly what you have learned when we got when we're doing circles with the center 0, 0. So let's do the following equation. You are given the center one and minus three. And the circle passes four and one. Calculate R. Now we know the center is not zero zero. So first of all, you must be clear as to what formula you're using. If you use the formula x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared, that is if the center is 0, 0. The formula where the center is not 0, 0 is x minus a all squared plus y minus b all squared is equal to r squared. Once you got the correct formula, substitute all the information you have, which is exactly like our previous video when we discussed circle with the center 0, 0. Now we're going to substitute. So we have x minus 1 all squared plus y minus minus 3 all squared is equal to r squared. Now we've only substituted the center. But when I say substitute, I mean everything. So we also have to substitute the other point they give us, which is x and y. So in x's place, we're now going to put 4. So we have 4 minus 1 all squared plus and then in the y's place, we're going to put the 1. 1 plus 3 all squared is equal to r squared. Now look, you don't need to go and do the whole kitty cat and try and solve it. You can simply say 4 minus 1 is 3. So I've got 3 squared. Plus 1 plus 3 is 4. So I've got 4 squared is equal to r squared. A lot of times at this level, we see children doing kitty cat and trying to solve it. Remember, you do kitty cat when you have unknowns and knowns. So you have two different, so you have two different terms. But when you got four and one, they're not two different terms, they're constants. So you can simply join it. So we have nine plus 16, which is 25. So R squared is equal to 25. But the question says, what is R? So we're going to root it and we have R is equal to five. Again, only a positive version because radius is always positive. Let us look at the following diagram. What they're telling us is that calculate D if it is the center of the circle. Now, if D is the center of the circle, you need to know your analytical of grade 10 and you need to know your analytical of grade 11. Because even though we are working with circles, a lot of those concepts are going to come into these questions. Now, D is the center of the circle, which means it is the midpoint of CB. If I want to calculate D, I'm going to be calculating the midpoint of CB. Now CB, if you remember, the midpoint is X1 plus X2 divided by 2, Y1 plus Y2 divided by 2. Remember, you can label it as you like, X1, Y1, X2, Y2. But again, you can label it different. It's no problem. We're going to have 7 plus negative 1 all over 2. And for y, we're going to have 1 plus 5 all over 2. Giving us a center of 7 minus 1 gives us 6 divided by 2. It's 3 and 3. So our center of the circle is 3 and 3. Now, how do we calculate the radius? The radius is simply the distance from the center to the circumference. So if I want to calculate R, I can simply get the distance. 
again you are working with your grade 10 work distance is equal to the square root of remember you have to be familiar with your grade 10 work both these concepts are from grade 10 so you have to be familiar with your grade 10 work if you are not okay with this you need to go and look at our videos on grade 10 regarding analytical geometry okay now what we are doing is we calculating r which means we are calculating the distance of cd so if we calculating the distance of cd we already got x2 y2 marked by c so what we're going to do is by d we're going to mark it as x1 y1 now we're going to substitute so d is equal to now my x2 is minus 1 so we have minus 1 minus and then my x1 is 3 minus 3 close brackets all squared plus my y2 is 5 minus and then my y1 is 3 all squared so what we have is that the distance is equal to minus 1 minus 3 is minus 4 all squared plus 5 minus 3 is 2 all squared remember you don't need to do the kitty cat because they are the same they are both constants so all you have to do is add now we have d is equal to the root of minus 4 squared is positive 16 plus 2 squared is positive 4 so our radius is equal to the root of 20 then they want the equation of the circle we know from the drawing that it's clearly not 0 0 the center is not 0 0 it's 3 and 3 so we have to use the correct formula which is x minus a all squared plus y minus b all squared is equal to r squared now we've got x minus 3 because remember a and b are the centers y minus 3 all squared where am I getting the 3 from I'm getting them from the center I'm getting it from the center of the circle so the 3 is coming from the centers of the circle is equal to now be careful this D that you've calculated at this level is your R but in the formula we don't want R what do we want we want R squared so you have to square both sides which actually then gives us that R squared is equal to 20 be careful this is an easy thing to miss in that rush you simply just put root of 20 which is incorrect so your final answer is 20 so we have x minus 3 all squared plus y minus 3 all squared is equal to 20 the equation of the circle you must be able to do all these different methods they always end up being similar it's grade 10 work 11 work all in one looking at this question what I want to show you is that I had used the distance formula but if we were given the center and another point you could have also chosen to do it as we had done it before look at this question we were given the center and we were given another point and then we substituted and we calculated R so you can choose to do it this way as well you don't always need to use my methods you can think of different methods but this method is also one option to use when trying to calculate R so there's different methods but this is the one I worked with but you can choose to work on a different method thank you for watching